Thank you for joining us. Over the years, we see how rapid progress in industry, technology, and manufacturing is changing the workforce and the demand for different professions. But the interdependency of trades remains the same. In order for pilots to fly an airliner, we need mechanics and electricians, farmers and all other trades to enable all that we take for granted. Our first guest today is a prominent member of the business community and owner of a company that provides an essential service, especially in hurricane-prone Florida. Scott Biedemann is the president and CEO of SCI Roofing, an innovative company that has its own university that trains students in their industry. We also have Nick Sansone, owner of Sansone Air Conditioning, who will update us on the latest technology from Carrier Air Conditioning. We'll learn more about this following an overview on industry and these messages. Human age reversal. We may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While life extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool breeze on a scorching day? Or a cozy corner on a cold night? <laughs> that every room of the house is as inviting as the next. And the air is fresh and clean for everyone. But humidity is where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. And the people who invented modern air conditioning keep inventing new ways to make you comfortable. However you define it. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. display of the variety and depth of Americans at work, creating the products and services of our present and future. Education and training in all fields is what enables knowledge and productivity. Competencies we take lessons learned and the best practices from all over the world and implement them in many jobs. and the right tools produce quality performance. now 
and for the future. With us now is Scott Biederman, President of SCI Roofing and Coating. A pleasure to finally have you on the show, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me here. You've been in business for many years, Scott, and you've seen it all, I guess, from Hurricane Andrew to Irma, and your company, regardless of storms, keeps everybody dry. Tell us a little bit about the different systems of roofing that your company and all your large staff are actually installing. There's all types of systems. There's uh, anywhere from shingles, you have tile roofs, you have metal roofing, you've got uh, built up roofs, you have single plies, and then you have a system called urethane foam. Uh, it passes a general electric silicone they put over the top of it. it it's the only system that you can get a category five hurricane uh, warranty on it. We use it on a lot of big commercial buildings. It uh, has a negative, they all have a pressure rating, these type of systems. Shingles have anywhere from 110 to 130. Then tile roofs, they can go up to 175. But the uh, urethane foam, it's, uh, they have a, a wind pressure of a negative 495. It's an insane amount of pressure, wind pressure. And that's one of the General Electric, it's General Electric and uh, bare aspirin was the inventors of it. Is this urethane material the same as the great stuff that you can buy in a, in a grocery store? That's an open cell material and it is a urethane foam. There's uh, in your couch, it's a half pound density and around your refrigerator is a two pound density. And what we actually stick on your roof is a closed cell material and it's a three pound density. If you submerge it, they call it the Coast Guard test, if you submerge it for 30 days in the water and you take it out and weigh it, it would weigh the exact same thing. The open cell, like that great cell, is like a sponge. And this is a, a dense, real dense material. Fascinating, it's yeah. fascinating how technology has solutions uh, for so many problems on Earth. And if only people, if only humanity would implement all the solutions, whether it's roofing, medicine, health, education, food distribution, and all the rest of the problems. So I'm fascinated by the construction industry and of course, roofing as well. Let me change topics for a question and uh, ask you, how on earth did a Jewish gentleman like you get into the roofing business? You look more like a lawyer. <laughs> My father uh, was a painter. And he came down here in the late 50s, early 60s, and he was uh, painting houses. And he started uh, coating manufacturing, and he was making the coatings that go over the top. It was Pioneer technology, and he was making coatings for uh, coating walls and roofs. And the urethane foam was uh, brand new. And he was making the top coating for that. And a gentleman got into my father for a lot of money, and. He went, took him to court and uh, got a judgment against him. And the guy said, you own a roofing company. So my dad went and he ended up uh, staying in the urethane foam. He became a contractor and he was tired of chasing uh, contractors for his money. You know, I'm sure you know the way contractors are. They always uh, take deposits and run off. And my dad was real honest and he didn't want to chase them. So he ended up uh, becoming a urethane. He was one of the pioneers in that industry. And uh, we've been doing it for, this is our 41st year. We're one of the oldest companies in uh, Broward County, if not the oldest. And there's so much competition in construction and the roofing industry. I personally don't understand how it is that in a hurricane prone area of the United States, why they even have roofs permitted that are so very delicate. A coconut hits a roof and boom, there's a hole in it. I think it makes a lot more sense to make homes hurricane proof like the way your company does. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of uh, systems out there uh, that they're not good for hurricanes. There's some, a lot of single plies and you know something punctures in it, the water travels vertically or laterally, those uh, single ply systems and shingles, uh, you know, a lot of the old roofs, they took off tile roofs and they put uh, shingles and they didn't have a real steep pitch. Like up north, the roofs have a real steep pitch. The wind goes across them and creates like a vacuum. The best thing for uh, somebody, when you have a roof on there, if you have like a tile roof, it's better to go back with the tile roof because the building was designed 
what it originally had on there. So many homeowners have suffered during these last hurricanes, including my own home here in South Florida. And uh, are there any new methods, any new systems that are being implemented to reduce the extent of damage? They are innovating, absolutely. And uh, they actually, the tile roofs, they used to use cement underneath the tile roofs. And they came out with uh, putting the urethane foam that we put on roofs, on commercial buildings and so on. They ended up uh, using the urethane foam underneath the tile. The tile used to have cement underneath it, and it would let loose at like a 30 pound pull. Well, they put urethane foam underneath it, and it has, it's five times stronger than, than the concrete that they used to use. So they're always innovating. The tile roofs, the, uh, the ridge caps all used to blow off. Now they put a metal and they screw them in so they're not set down you know, with nothing underneath them. So the roofs are, systems are getting better and better. Yet uh, so labor intensive. I remember seeing people rolling the uh, felt and then hammering these tin tabs, these little circles and it seems ridiculous to have hundreds and hundreds of those hammered on the roof and then cover that with something. So I'm glad to hear that there is some intelligent innovation being implemented. Let's uh, change topics and talk a little bit about uh, your other interests. What else do you do other than roofs? I'm sure you're busy with many other causes. I have a private pilot license and I do a little bit of flying and whenever I get around I uh, try to do a little bit of fishing, but I work all the time. That's my main passion is roofing. I was born and raised in it, and that's my main passion. So I spent a lot of time working. Tell us about your plane. What do you have? I have a 172. It's a little four-seat airplane. I've been flying since I was about 19 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Single engine? Single engine, yeah. We've owned, uh, we used to live on a fly-in community where you fly and you pull your plane in your garage and I traded a guy a roof job. He owned a flight school, and I was talking to with him like you, and he says, I own a flight school. I said, well, instead of I'll trade you off and I'll do the roof on your house. So and he taught me how to fly. And, that's when I, and then my father became a pilot, and we've owned several planes over the years, different ones. It so happens, Scott, that I, as I mentioned, I really interested in construction and the creativity of it. I like architecture and so forth. In fact, I studied architecture but never graduated in that area. But anyway, so uh, tell us more about your company and current projects you have going on. Our largest project right now that we're doing, uh, it's a development, it's called Lauderdale West. It's, uh, there are 72 acres of roof. We're doing 1.8 million feet of tile there, 900,000 feet of shingles. And on the flat roofs, we're doing 700,000 feet of urethane foam on that. We did the People's Clubhouse 25 years before, and now we're doing the whole entire project. We've been on that since 2015, and we're going to be finishing up probably next year, the, the project. It's a retirement community. They're you know, 55 and over. The people uh, there, we've given them you know, a great benefit. We've put aluminum flashing around their perimeters. We're uh, putting a built-up roof down on the flat decks. And then on top of that, we're putting a urethane foam general electric roof system on their uh, flat decks. And their clubhouse roof has had the urethane foam on there for over 20 years. Still we're works, huh? Still doing great and holding up. And, yeah, and we own a, um, a 20,000 foot building in Pompano Beach. We have uh, probably close to 75 to 100 employees right now. We've been in, uh, my wife, uh, Heidi, she works with me at my office, and she's the one that really runs things around there. She's a big help to me. And I have a niece helping me there, and so it's very good. I have a lot of good employees. One of our oldest employees, uh, Lewis Moorhorn, he's been with my family for 36 years. So we have a lot of old employees. I, have a secretary that's been there for 20 years and 10, 15 years, a lot of other people. So a lot of my father's first guys are, are still around. We've so it's like one big happy family. Yeah. That's great. That is heartwarming and very nice. I wish companies and business in general were more like that 
more often. I think that's very, very nice. Great motivation, lot, a lot of loyalty, integrity, conscientiousness in the work and so forth. It is, and my father wanted to make our company, the one thing he really wanted to make, he wanted to make it a good place to work. So just as much as me spending time on doing roofs, I spend a lot of time making our company better, you know, so the people enjoy it and, you know, we have nice Christmas parties, we have, we take a, we have a bus, we take everybody to the sporting events and, you know, we're always looking for good people. So if anybody's listening to me and wants to try roofing and come in, I'm always, always looking for good people. We're, we've got tons and tons of work and I need good people all the time. So anybody that's looking for a job, Come and see us, definitely. This is all very interesting, Scott. I'd like us to continue, but we must pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. We're back with Scott Biederman. Scott, I'd like to discuss with you some of your views with regard to how society is changing so much in these decades. I mean, technology has brought such differences from computers for 30 years and, and smartphones and uh, entertainment and social intercourse has also changed. People have modified their values and have become in many ways more superficial than ever. And uh, some people say, hey, the old fashioned values were more romantic and more pleasant. There was more integrity, more conscientiousness in the workplace. Uh, people were dedicated, more appreciative, people would count their blessings more. And today we have a world, it seems, more so, where anything goes. What are your thoughts on all of that? It's, it's definitely changed. And, uh, you know, our, uh, our company, we're trying to make it, just like I said before, we're trying to make it a better place to work. And we're trying to make the, in, the roofing industry more of a profession. And, you know, a lot of kids, they go to college and then they come back and their parents say, you know, they used to tell their parents, I don't want to go to college anymore. So a lot of parents will tell them, go become a master electrician or go become a master plumber. You know, they'll tell the kids, you can make $40, $50 an hour. But you ask a kid, you know, they all, a lot of the people that work for us, you ask them, you say, what do you do for a living? You say, I'm a roofer. And they kind of have their head hung down. So we've been trying to change that. My wife and my niece have been, we started a university and we went up to uh, Washington DC last year and we lobbied Al C. Hastings and Bill Nelson and uh, we tried to get this Carl Perkins Act passed. And now we have funding for a university for not just only roofing, but other industries. We're trying to make it a, a better industry where you know, the kids hold their head up and they're, you know, they're proud of what they do, you know, it's... Absolutely, but trades are so essential, really, as the video in the very beginning of our program today, the two-minute video showing the interdependency of different trades. We, to have a pilot up in the air, we need mechanics on the ground, we need carpenters, uh, farmers. It's great if people want to go to college, but there's a lot of uh, roofers out there that do very, very well, and I'm happy to see people there's nothing more than I enjoy is watching, you know, a person do well in their life. So we started this university. It costs, it costs a, a pretty penny because we actually are paying the employees in there to go through the uh, program. And they have to agree to work for us for a certain amount of time. But uh, the NRCA has three of these modules done and they have the funding. They actually went to all the manufacturers and they were trying to raise $15 million to do that and they got the funding, some of the funding from the Carl Perkins Act. So, and we actually were one of the pioneers, we're one of the pioneers in the schools down here. A very so, big and significant project that is. Yeah, it's uh, SCI University. And my wife, uh, Heidi Biederman and uh, Lindsay Moans, they were the architects of it and I just supported them doing it, but they put it all together and. They built a, a little house outside of our building and they would put the roof down, they would rip it off and then put the roof down again and rip it off. So they, you know, now we have actually a, a really good tile crew that came out of that uh, class. And we're getting ready to start our second uh, school. So we're gonna keep it moving as we can afford it. You know, it 
costs a lot of money to do that. Yeah, but very important. In fact, I would think that the uh, educational entities in this state and elsewhere should support it. We used to have vocational schools, and I don't know what happened to them. There was McFadder and Atlantic Vocational. There was right. a, and they all disappeared, and they kind of went into the computer industry. But as far as air conditioning and sheet metal and roofing and different type of trades, I, they've all gone by the wayside. So this Carl Perkins Act is supposed to you know, bring those schools back, and that's what they're, we're trying to make happen. This is all very interesting, as I've said before. And again, I'd like to change topics and ask you to share with us a little bit about your Jewish roots. I believe your family originally came from Europe and uh, you brought your grandmother, uh, Miss Hoffman, over. Not she, she was our great-grandma that came over. Uh, Grandma Hoffman uh, and uh, Gob Gobleth Biederman, they were our first grandparents to come over. Ida Hoffman was her name and uh, Grandpa came over from Germany in the late 1800s they came over to and they settled in Canada there was uh, and they went down to the World Fair in the uh, late 1800s my great great grandpa and that was and we were settled in Canada our family and my they went to a town called Sudbury I don't know if you heard of it it's where the uh, they practice for the moon because it looks like the moon up there. The astronauts went up there. And it's a big nickel mining. So my great-great-grandpa, they that's where we originated. And they, him and his brother, and Ida Hoffman, they, uh, Biederman, we went down to the World Fair, and then they went back up to, uh, they went back up to Sudbury, and my great-grandpa stayed in that area. They were in logging. And the other one, brother went out to the gold rush, and they never seen each other again. And that's where our family was. My father was the first Biederman to migrate down to Florida. He came down in the, uh, in the late 50s, early 60s. And here you all are right now in South Florida, such an integrated, close-knit family. It's so heartwarming and a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me. I really appreciated it. I'll be right back. Here are the headlines regarding Irma. Unprecedented power. We've had 185 mile per hour winds now for 24 hours. That has never happened before in recorded history. The most powerful hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean made landfall in the Caribbean. This video was taken aboard a plane traveling right through the eye of the storm as it intensified. And on the ground, winds blowing at 185 miles an hour in St. John. Seems to be record-breaking hurricane heading right toward Florida and Puerto Rico and other places. Those places currently under a state of emergency. I cannot stress this enough. Do not ignore evacuation orders. Residents were warned to brace for the worst as the strongest winds in a century lashed Puerto Rico. Irma has already left plenty of evidence of its record-setting strength. Wind gusts topped 200 miles per hour, knocking out power as buildings collapsed and debris flew. St. Martin took a direct hit. Wind and pelting rain blew palm trees horizontal. Irma made landfall on the southern shores of Florida early on Sunday evening. As it approached the state, it increased in strength and changed direction. Miami was spared a direct hit. It's a lovely sunny day here in South Florida and with me is Nick Tanzone. It's a pleasure to have you with us here nice today. Nice to see you. Especially under the circumstances. So what are we doing here today? We're replacing a damaged unit from Hurricane Irma. 
with the new Carrier 19 VS. Great, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's go. Here we're here today and we're in this where we're gonna put the new AC. Rudy, I have to say, I'm astonished by the extent of the work required to do a meticulous, conscientious job yep. by your company with this carrier product. We at Sansone are proud to do our best, no matter what model we're installing. Gentlemen, this is absolutely amazing, really astonishing. Rudy, what was the job you were just doing soldering? What was that? Uh, we're welding the copper lines together and we run nitrogen through the lines as we weld so that we don't enter curse soot to land up in the TXVs or dryers or uh, get in the system in any way. We flush it through instantly. And this is all way above my head. It is kind of unique for companies such as Sansone to have the most credible, credited and trained technicians, I understand. Correct, yeah, we want the best technicians out there so we can resolve the, the issues or whatever the first time with our NATE certified technicians. And ensure appropriately excellent work consistent with the quality of this incredible new carrier air conditioner, just fabulous. Nick, I must say I'm really excited and relieved to see this beauty here right now, all done. Give us a summary of what occurred today. We have now completed this system and we're ready to cool this house down. Excellent. I want to thank you very, very much. What you and Sansone and Carrier have done is absolutely stupendous. This is amazing. Can't get any better than this. No, you can't. This is one of the best. Thank you, sir. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com.